Mike, tell us about Incognito. Yeah, Incognito is kind of in a category of its own when it comes to food plot mixes because the deer don't actually eat it. It's designed, well, it was designed to conceal access to your food plot so you can get in and out of your tree stand without being detected. Mm -hmm. It's got a variety of Egyptian wheat, two varieties of sorghum, one that grows 13 feet tall, one that's more like five or six, but it's sturdy, it's stocky. Yeah. Holds that up during the winter, winds, things of that nature. Um, and I say it was designed that way because it's not always used that way. Mm -hmm. And that's the fun part about it. People have gotten really creative with incognito on how they use it. And now it's not just to conceal access, but it's to conceal a plot from a road, from a neighbor, keep shiners out, keep poachers out. Mm -hmm. Or you take a, a food plot that's built like a square and you kind of direct deer by planting it in in different portions where you force deer out in front of your tree stand, for instance. Yeah. Um, instead of hunting an acre field and going, wow, I saw a lot of deer, but I couldn't shoot any of them. Mm -hmm. People use this now to kind of direct traffic. So what started as just a concealment blend has really become one of our most important habitat improvement blends or domain improvement blends. It's become a tool. It's 100% it's a tool. Whether it's a hunting tool or just a habitat tool, um, it's, an, it's a tool and it needs to be on every property because of the benefits that it offers to your success, but also to the security of your deer. They're gonna be a lot more comfortable feeding in those food plots if, if they're, they're on an edge, if you will. They're edge creatures. So if you've got an edge of incognito, you have a higher likelihood of deer feeding in that plot because they know they can get into that edge quickly and, and be secure. So and when should I plant it? Yeah, so incognito is um, a little different than others as well because there is kind of a distinct planting period. It so, changes based on where you're located, but mm -hmm. you need to make sure it's established well after the first frost. You can't get those tiny plants or seeds frozen. So yeah. a lot of times I say May, there's no sense in, in doing it too early because it likes heat. It likes humidity. It yeah. likes growing in the summer. It's a warm season grass. So Egyptian wheat. May in the north. And then as you go, you can you can even go further. June, July, August. I mean, 70 to 100 days maturity. Okay. But you got to think, at 100 days, it's 12 to 13 feet tall. Mm -hmm. So at 50 days, it's 6 feet tall. Yeah. So still a heck of a concealment. It loves nitrogen. It loves sunlight. Not as shade tolerant as some. Um, and it, again, it loves nitrogen. So the more you can pour to it, once it once it's established, the, the taller it's going to grow. Fertilizer or anything like that to add to it? Yeah, I mean, once we when we plant it, I like to get like a 19, 19, 19 to help okay. build that stock growth and root growth. But once it gets established, just nitrogen to get it get it pumping. Um, and then, like I said, it loves heat, loves humidity, loves the sun, loves summer. Yep. And that's what allows it to grow so well once you get it established. Love it. So it's so. just so many creative options with it. It is, and, yeah. And, we're, and even to this day, I feel like more people are coming up with cool ideas on how to use it. Every day, yep. And the other thing, too, is behind my house, I plant it like two feet wide. Okay. We recommend 10 feet. Try, yep. to, try to widen it. When it's green, I mean, it's thicker than thick. But when it browns up, it's like corn. Um, so the wider it is, the better your cover is and security. Love so, it. Um, okay. So that's incognito. And like I said, I'm excited to see the more ways people use it to help improve their domain. Um, but it's a it's a hunting tool. It's a habitat tool. And it's really important to integrate into your property.